Um, so Matt is a university broadcast journalism teacher at the Department of Jam Journalism at the University of Sheffield. Um, um, I've got that Matt's an experienced film editor having worked for the BBC and others and has a BSc in physics and an MA in documentary film and television. So uh, over to you Matt. Okay, thank you very much Rachel. Um, yeah, all of that's true. Um, but um, I'm, I'm not really going to talk about sort of, um, you know, making broadcast quality videos um, today. I, I am going to talk about something that you can do um, in, your, in your home, in the place where you're studying, in your place of work, along with other people. Um, one of the things that people say to me when I say, oh, well, I, you know, I used to make videos or I still do make videos is that, oh, well, I could never do that because I've not got the equipment to do it. Um, maybe a few years ago, that was the case. Um, but nowadays, I think we all have a lot of video making tools at our disposal. Um, so just if you if you were beginning to think that, you know, all oh, the video competition, I'd like to take part, but I haven't got any any of those sort of skills or any of those, uh, the, any of the technology. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is to um, to reassure you that you do have the skill and that you do have the technology um, just to hand sort of almost immediately. Uh, yeah, so that's the first part of what I'm going to talk about. Um, so let's crack on with that. Um, so yeah, when I was thinking about this, um, I thought, well, what sort of what sort of thing could you actually make a video of? Um, and the first thing I thought of was uh, something uh, you may have heard of called uh, Pecha Kucha. Um, this is probably something that you've come across at uh, a conference. Uh, I know that whenever I've been to a conference, they usually have um, a, a sort of one of these Pecha Kucha sessions. Um, but if you've not heard of it, um, I believe I've done my research. It stands for it means chit chat in Japanese. So um, if, if there are any other uh, if there are any Japanese speakers, forgive me if I've pronounced that really badly. Um, but yeah, basically, the idea is that you have 20 slides and that you spend 20 seconds uh, on each one. And that is the whole of your presentation. Um, so 20 times 20 is probably a little bit longer in seconds than you've got for this video. But if you had a few less slides or you took a little bit less um, on each one of them, then I'm sure you could make a little presentation, record it on video um, that would sort of fit in with this. Uh, now, of course, if, if your slides aren't very exciting, if they're plain text on a, on a, on a plain background, it's not going to be the most innovative or exciting video. Um, it might well get the message across, which is important, probably the most important thing, but obviously it needs to look good visually as well. Um, so I would sort of say that, you know, obviously PowerPoint does some pretty whizzy things these days. Um, you could use another platform. Uh, like Prezi or something like that, which again has got m many more sort of interesting templates and will allow you to do something a little bit more creative and imaginative with your presentation. Um, so those are some of maybe the platforms that you could use. Um, but yeah, how do you go about recording it? Um, and again, I don't know if I'm teaching people how to suck eggs, uh, but there are lots and lots of screen capture um, applications out there. Um, I know certainly from our, from, for us at Sheffield, and I know not, not everyone on this call does work at the University of Sheffield, um, we have a system called uh, Kaltura that all members of staff and students have access to, and that has some screen capture technology built in within it. Um, but let me show you something that is available freely for everybody. Um, and so uh, it's really, really simple to use. So um, this is something called Screencast-O-Matic, which is a great name, <laughs> but it does, it does what it says on the tin. Um, and I'm going to see if I can share my screen and uh, uh, demonstrate it to you. So forgive me while I rummage around here. So let's try that. There we go. So um, this is Screencast-O-Matic. Um, it takes a little while to sort of load up. I tried to do that yesterday, so it was all sort of ready to go. Um, you will need to spend a few minutes getting it uh, put onto your computer, your laptop, whatever whatever else you're going to use. I think it probably even works on a tablet or a phone. Um, but it is really, really simple. 
all you need to do is click on the record button up there. Um, and yeah. So there we go. This is now uh, recording. I can sort of say, I want to record the screen. I want to record my webcam or probably what you might want to do is both. So you've got the screen and you've got the webcam just up in the corner there or maybe in the corner um, down here. And so all you need to do then is just click on record. It'll give you a little countdown and off you go. You are now recording. So you can now just sort of uh, present to the camera and you can also cycle through your slides on the screen. Um, and there you go. You can record a presentation and then you can submit that as your film uh, for the whole project. So let's stop that. It is really simple to use. Um, and let's try and maybe stop sharing my screen now. OK, so um, that's one thing that you can use. You can pretty simply um, you know, record your screen using that technology and then uh, submit uh, that whatever you do as you're recording there um, for the video competition. Um, another thing you could use would be would be Zoom itself or Google Meets if you prefer uh, that kind of video conferencing technology. Um, again, you can set up um, a Zoom call. You can set up a Google Meet. You can share your screen, hopefully slightly more successfully than I did just then. Um, and, you know, again, cycle through the slides that you've got um, while recording uh, your Zoom meeting or recording your Google Meet. And then you can submit that as well. While we're talking about Zoom or Google Meet, uh, you could also um, create a kind of mini podcast um, as a video. So if you've got a, a research team, then you could sort of like have a little conversation uh, between sort of two or three of you within that team, almost like the little presentations you were doing just as I joined the call um, on, on uh, carbon capture and storage. You were sort of starting to discuss between yourselves in your teams some particular questions. So if you wanted, maybe if you've got three people on a call, you could actually just have a little chat back and forwards, um, debating various bits of, of the issues that you wanted to talk about and record those as well. So that might be another thing that you could do in terms of creating a video. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that one. Um, another thing you could do is um, you could use your phone. You know, I think, I hope I'm not being too um, assuming too much that everyone's got a smartphone and obviously um, on your smartphone, you have got um, a, a fabulous video camera um, that you could make a video with. Um, so I can't see anybody's uh, video at the moment. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is um, uh, let's just see. Um, if you've got a phone nearby, would you mind turning on your camera and then holding up your phone as though you were about to do a video? OK, I can see Rachel. I can see uh, Chris, is that? I can see Karis. Yeah, OK, all right. Um, so I can't see anybody else on my screen at the moment, um, but the people I can see um, would, would not make the kind of video that I would hope for. What we've got to do when we uh, do our, make our videos is, is hold our phone in landscape. Um, so I'm going to show you a silly video. Um, and hopefully it will go better than last time. Uh, so this is, is a little bit silly, but it does um, make the point. Meh. This video didn't have to look this way. It could have been prevented. Say no to vertical videos. Vertical videos happen when you hold your camera the wrong way. Your video will end up looking like crap. <laughs> there are more and more people addicted to making vertical videos every day. It's not crack or nothing, but it's still really bad. There are two different kinds of people who are afflicted with VVS. The first group treats the videos they shoot like pictures. They don't mean any harm. 
They just don't understand that while you can turn a picture, you can't really turn a video. <laughs> Vertical video syndrome is dangerous. Motion pictures have always been horizontal. Televisions are horizontal. Computer screens are horizontal. People's eyes are horizontal. We aren't built to watch vertical videos. I love vertical videos! Nobody cares about you! If this problem's left unchecked, YouTube will begin showing four videos at once, just to save bandwidth. Leatherboxed vertical videos would be the size of a postage stamp. And it will spread everywhere. Movie screens have always been horizontal. If vertical videos become accepted, movie theaters will have to be tall and skinny. And all the movie theaters would have to get torn down and rebuilt. And by the time they were rebuilt, Mina Kulitz would be old and ugly. And birds will crash into them and die. And we will all get stiff necks from looking up. And no one will sit in the front row ever again. And George Lucas will re-release Star Wars again. The skinny edition. I was never really able to tell the story that I wanted to tell. This was a great chance for me to experiment with a new technology. You're a jerk. Every time a mobile device is used to record video, the temptation is there. Just say no. Say no to George Lucas. Say no to old Mila Kunis. Say no to vertical videos. And if you see someone doing it, say, You're not shooting that right, dummy! Okay, so yeah, it's a silly video, but hopefully it gets the point across uh, that um, you do need to hold your phone if you're going to be using it in, in a kind of landscape direction. Um, that is a bit of an old film. Um, so these days, if you're going to make something for social media, then it is perfectly acceptable to do that because that's what social media likes. But um, if I was paying attention correctly, um, you said that these films are going to go out on a YouTube channel and a YouTube channel uh, much prefers horizontal videos rather than vertical ones. So yeah, I would encourage you when you, if you are going to film something with your phone to use it in a landscape way. And that would work really well if you're if you're doing something, if you're doing something in a lab, if there's something visual behind you, uh, if you want to sort of demonstrate something to your viewers, you're going to be using your hands a lot, then actually filming with your phone uh, would be a really good thing to do. Um, so that, that that might work really well. Obviously, of course, after that, you can go on and you can film uh, lots of things. Oh, what's sorry as the things in the if you if you have got technology um, then I'm assuming that maybe you might have done a little bit of video making already so um, you know you can use uh, a camera you know you can use editing programs but again that's that's going you know a, a long way into this you don't have to make such an advanced film to take part in the competition and I know I would just encourage you to take part because technology is one thing, it's great, it's fabulous, but I think the more important part of, of things is um, you know, the content and the presentation of your film. Um, that's what I'm gonna talk about next. So has anyone got any questions before I go on to those little bits? It's all very quiet. <laughs> That always makes me nervous. Has everyone gone to sleep? It's because it's very clear. It's okay. okay. Oh, thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, should we go on to the next bit then? If you think of a question, I'll give you more, more chances to ask questions later on. Um, okay, so presentation. Um, I think the other thing that people think is that when you're on camera, when you're making a presentation, it needs to be perfect. It needs to be without errors, no ums, no ahs, no stumbles. Um, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm a shining example of how true that isn't. Um, you know, I've already messed up this presentation completely. Um, the, I think people speak naturally when, you know, when you, when you, when you have erms, when you stumble a little bit, it seems much more natural. You don't really want it to be full of all of those things, but the odd one or two 
is absolutely fine. And that's how people would expect you to speak. Unless you have done a lot of acting, unless you have got a lot of presenting experience, it's very unlikely that you're going to be able to speak for three to five minutes without making a single mistake. Um, we haven't really talked about editing. Um, so it's it's reasonably likely you're going to have to try and do this sort of this filming in in one take. Um, you know, it's pretty simple to join some some chunks together. But again, we haven't talked about that. Maybe I should talk about that towards the end. So, yeah, be relaxed as much as you can. And if just you know, and don't worry about it being absolutely perfect. Um, another thing that I'd like to say is that you should be looking straight at your camera, which I haven't been doing very well during this presentation. Um, but, you know, do be aware of where your webcam is or where the camera on your phone is and just look straight at it like I'm trying to do now. If you kind of if you're looking over here a bit and then you look down at your notes and then you look over there a little bit, you don't really make that connection with uh, your viewer. So um, again, as much as you possibly can, you know, you don't want to be staring really intently at the camera, but if you just look towards the camera and pretend that the camera is not that, it's, it's, it's a single person. I think that's the sort of the next thing to think about is you're not broadcasting to the world. You're not, um, you know, addressing a lecture theater full of people. Um, it usually comes out best in when you're doing your presenting, if you imagine that you're talking to a friend or a family member. Um, so I guess this is a fairly usual experience for, for all of us at the moment in that we are meeting our friends. We are meeting our families again for the first time in possibly quite a while. Um, and, poss and probably one of the things that they will ask you, one of the questions they'll say is, well, wh what have you been working on recently? Um, and so if you imagine that your presentation is just that, you're answering that kind of question for your family member or for your friend um, in a very relaxed setting in a cafe, in the pub, um, over a meal, in the park, wherever it might be, just imagine that you're just answering those questions and then hopefully you'll be reasonably relaxed and, and it will come across in a conversational style as well. I think that's another thing that you'd want to think about, making sure that you're not using lots and lots of technical language. Um, again, if I was paying attention correctly, um, the video competition is all about speaking to a lay audience. So uh, if you use lots of technical language, then you're going to lose them very, very quickly. So just sort of try and keep it conversational and make sure that the language that you use is as easy to understand as possible. I think it's all right to use jargon terms, but then you do need to explain those jargon terms as well. Um, yeah, so that's that's the audience. But again, it will change slightly if you're if you were speaking to some A level students from STEM subjects then you know they might have uh, a little bit of science knowledge you could use that if you're speaking to your peers they're going to have a lot of technical knowledge but the lay audience probably not very much so yeah i think that that would be an, an important thing to think about making sure you, you're using the appropriate language as well okay so that's what i'm going to say about presentation um so then possibly the last thing I was going to talk about um, is about the content of your video. What do you actually need to say? So, um, yeah, as Rachel said, I work for the Department of Journalism at the University of Sheffield. And one of the things that we talk about is the five W's. So this is kind of a basic tenet of journalism. Um, Whenever you're, well, whether, you, whether you're writing something, whether you're doing a, a radio broadcast, whether you're making a piece of television, what you need to do is answer the five W's, which if I can remember, the five W's are who, what, where, when, and why. And you could probably also um, put how in there as well as another question that needs answering. Um, 
So yeah, when you're thinking about whichever topic you want to present, then can you put all of those pieces of information in there? And if you spend, I don't know, 20 seconds speaking about each of each of those, um, and then maybe a little bit longer on the why and the how, then that could be as much as you need to say um, for your for your video. Um, and another thing that I'd sort of like encourage you to think about would be um, what's your headline? Um, so again, I didn't catch a lot of what you were talking about before the break, but the, the last one that I did catch, um, the people who are presenting that said that, you know, carbon capture and storage is really important because it's going to save the planet from being, um, I can't remember what they said, a, a burning, I can't remember, but it was, it was quite, quite a dramatic phrase. Um, and that caught my attention. So um, do think about your headline. If you've got something that you can say that's quite dramatic, um, you know, this research is going to help in the fight against climate change. That should grab people's attention. It is going to stop our planet from um, heating up and catastrophic extinction events from happening. Those sorts of things are, are, are going to um, are going to really grab your viewers' attention. If you say, um, well, the, the history of car carbon capture and storage started in the, in the 1930s and you sort of go work slowly, slowly up to the current day, there's a possibility that you won't engage your audience and that they'll turn off before you get to the really good stuff about your research project um, right, that's happening right now. So that would be the other thing that I would say is you don't have to go into every tiny detail. Um, if you do, you will probably lose your lay audience. So think about the really important key facts that you want to get across. Um, something um, that really comes from media training, maybe ra rather than journalism, is thinking about three or potentially five key messages that you want to get across. So what are the most important things that you need to say um, in your video? And if you've got an idea of what those sort of three to five things are, then everything else you can you can kind of ignore. Those key messages are the things that you want to get across. So um, yeah, to recap that bit, have a headline, have something dramatic to to kick off your presentation, your video. Um, have some very clear messages within it. Leave out all the sort of less interesting stuff. Um, and again, probably have a nice clear summary or a sort of finishing point as well. That's what people are going to take away from your video. Um, you know, whatever comes right at the end. So make sure that's really clear and really strong as well. Um, and I don't know, I seem to have whizzed through that much faster than I thought I was going to. Um, but hopefully that's still helpful.